Uh, after further review for week 16, the taunting issue continues to hover over the NFL, even though it seems like some crews aren't calling it like they were earlier in the year. The Steelers ended up on the wrong side of a taunting call. And uh, here, here's here's Mike Tomlin, who supports taunting until it's called against his team. We're just trying to clean our game up. Um, we, we embrace the responsibility that comes with being the role models that we are. This game being played at the highest level, we understand that people that play at a lower level watch us and, and, and often mimic the things that we do and how we conduct ourselves. And just largely as a league, uh, competition committee specifically, uh, there was a desire to improve in that area. About the taunting penalty, was it different than the one that uh, got Chase Claypool benched? I, I categorically disagree with it. I thought that Ray Ray was signaling first down and he turned around to do so and the guy just happened to be there. I think we got to exercise some common sense. Well, let's see what uh, Mike Tom. Hey, hey, this, this is part of the this, this is, is part it. of the problem though. We've been saying this all common year. Common sense. Because you're gonna have but you're gonna have officials who see that interaction and it's gonna set off the bells and whistles that this is taunting because somebody is doing something that happens to be in someone's face. So there's Ray Ray McLeod. And uh, uh but you know, it, it it this is where you gotta be careful. And uh that that's that's uh I, I reject Mike Tomlin's explanation. He was in his face. Now, there are some crews who aren't calling it now, yeah, but but that that fit within the whole thing that they were pushing earlier this year that they don't want happening in the NFL. It, so I reject yeah. Mike Tomlin's rejection of the of the penalty. I agreed with him that it, it needs more common sense, but that's one where, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to be mad at the refs there. Again, I mean, we, we know that one. You're that close. They're telling them. They're, they're telling them to right, throw that flag. Right. They're that close to a defender, too, you know, in that situation there. Yeah, that, that's going to get called, you know, and players know better there. You know, again, yes, I'd like to see more common sense applied to this as well, but Ray Ray McLeod's got to use his common sense, too, and you know, right now, as a player, you got to get up and go, wait, all right, I want to signal first down or do something. You got to assess the situation a little bit and go, wait, let me make sure. And there, you know, he not only points the finger, but he's looking right up in the guy's face. So that, that to me is where, you know, I, I don't have an issue with that one. I've had an issue with a lot of them, certainly. Uh, but, but yeah, that to me deserved to be called. The, the problem is what they're trying to do is deprogram humanity. They're trying to remove emotion. They're trying to make football players not act like football players because I don't think that kind of thing is going to cause a rumble later in the no, game. No, it's not. And I don't think it's no. going to cause kids to act like hooligans. That's just a human reaction. That's where the common sense needs to come into play. But But they've already decided they're calling those, and they've been calling them – fairly consistently all year. Here's Jamar Chase, the Bengals receiver on Sunday against the Ravens, spinning the ball at the Ravens sideline. He got flagged for taunting here. Thou shalt not posture toward the sideline. Thou shalt not spin the ball toward the sideline. Let's have a look at what Jamar Chase did. I saw this. I don't like this call. We think this should have been 15 yards of field position for the Ravens. There's Jamar Chase. Uh, he makes the catch and – yeah, I he's yes, he just happens to be there on the stripe. It wasn't but but this, the, look, this is this the is problem why, right here. The fact the, that he's looking at their sideline and does it, then does it yep. to me, that's what got him. Right? Here's the key. Yeah. You got to know where the line is and stay the hell away yeah, from it. Right. That, that, that's the best advice you can give to anyone in any setting, in any context. There's always a line on what you can do. And your best play is know where it is and never get so close to it. Then anyone can say you crossed it. Stay away from it. Right there, he's literally on the line. Literally. You don't do it right there. Because even if you didn't mean to do it, you're, you're creating enough ammunition to cause somebody to throw a flag. And this all goes back to coaching. W w explaining to the guys what is and isn't allowed. Coaching it in practices. Because I'm sure guys like that act like that in practice too. So you got to call them out when they do it in practice. And holding them accountable when they do it in games. That's the only way that, that it's ever going to get to the point where it needs to be. Where teams aren't giving up 15 yards that that they shouldn't be giving up. Yeah, I, I agreed with all that. You know, again, it's, you got to assess the situation like you said. Yeah, we, we want the refs to use common sense. Players also got to use it too. You know, Ray Ray McLeod, I'm cool. You want to get up, point first down, do all that? Just... You know, take a few steps upfield. Get out of the way of the defender so it doesn't make look like you're, like, trying to show him up. Same thing with Jamar Chase. I think he'd be doing fine if he just spins the ball on the sidelines. It's the fact that he turns to the sideline 
and literally makes eye contact with him and then spins it like eat this and then turns away. To me, that's the part. I think if he catches the ball and never makes a gesture or looks at the Ravens sideline and kind of just keeps looking upfield, I don't think anything would have ever been done. I don't. At least that's what I feel. But I feel like it's this little part of gets tackled, gets up, face faces the sideline right here, and now does it. That's what's going to get your butt in trouble in the in the NFL with the officiating right now. You, you gotta you gotta be aware of like you're saying what's around you and where the line is that you can't cross, literally and figuratively. On a day that we honor and remember the life and legacy of the great John Madden, our next one looked like a glitch from the Madden game as it was happening. This is from Sunday night, Washington at Dallas. Cowboy center Tyler Biadez downfield illegally. Let's watch this. Let's take a look at this. Uh, uh, I mean, this is ridiculous. He's past the receiver well, who catches the ball. It, it, it is amazing. It wasn't seen. The linebacker's saying, what the hell is going on here? And, uh, yeah, it, it did. I've seen freeze frames of it that looks like a glitch for Madden. How is that guy so far downfield? And they just flat out missed it. And 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 I don't know what he's thinking. Where he, he did doesn't he think know it was a play. run play. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he, he just he some, thinks it's a run play. Yeah. But he starts into his pass block set. I, he thought it was he a draw. The, he, he I don't snaps, know what he thought. He snaps and he goes back. And then, I don't know, maybe the guy said something about his mother and he decided he was going to chase him. I, I, I That's really, what it looks like. I, it looks like he decides, I'm going to chase this guy. I, I don't know. I don't know how he gets away with that. I don't understand why there's no flag. I don't understand. That's really the, the bottom line is, come on. And, and bottom line is that this is being, you know, it's being let go way too much in NFL football games. You know Tuesday, Mike. I sit there, watch film all day and do all that stuff. That's all I do yesterday. I literally sit at my kitchen table from like 10 to like 6 at night and just watch NFL football. I, every game I turn on, you could call they should that should be called five more times a game. You know, again, the defense is at enough of a disadvantage in this day and age in the NFL. Now we're going to let the team run block 6 yards downfield and have pass patterns on the other side. That's got to stop. The NFL's got to do something about that. That's stupid, it's cheating, it shouldn't be allowed. And they got to wake up. How you miss that, I don't even know. Everybody saw it in real time when I was watching the game on TV here at NBC. You know, if the blocker's farther downfield than the guy catching the ball, there's a little issue there. Come on. That, that's ridiculous. And, and that's the kind of thing that gets people to say the fix is in, the fix is in. When there's an error that glaring and the flag isn't thrown, people assume, not incompetence, they assume some level of corruption, even, even if it wasn't. Um, there was another funny moment from the game the other night that that thankfully common sense prevailed and the official who was standing right there realized it was just a couple of guys having some fun. Randy Gregory with Taylor Heineke on the ground after a play. Gregory rolls over next to him and it was all done playfully. And, you know, you could have, as Marv Levy would say, an over officious jerk who would decide to make an issue of it. But we'll see the camera will cut back to Heineke on the ground after the hit. No flag for roughing the passer or nothing the passer, as the case may be. And let's see, uh, do we have the point where Heineke's actually on the ground and he rolls over? Okay. Thanks for nothing, Pete. Um, trust us, after that play, Heineke was laying on the ground, and Randy Gregory rolled over next to him. Um, let's move on to the next clip if we have it. Washington cornerback Bobby McCain flagged for unnecessary roughness on Cowboys tight end Dalton Schultz. This horrible. Is one of those where, horrible. Yeah. Horrible. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look and see how horrible it was. There's Dak Prescott, the throw, the hit. That that was that's one of those that we're so used to seeing that happen, and have it be an illegal hit. When the head jerks, you assume yeah. it's an illegal hit, but right. that is it's not. That's why you need to have sky judge or replay review. There's too much field position that is given up for something like this. There needs to be an opportunity to fix it in those situations where. It wasn't a hit to the helmet. It just looked like it because the body stopped so abruptly, the head jerked backward. Not every time a guy's head jerks backward is his helmet actually struck 
by another helmet or a forearm or whatever. You can't hit him in the head in that setting. You can't hit him in the chest. That's what Bobby McCain did. Yeah. I again. I just. I. I just. I hate those calls right now in the NFL. I do. You know. We're. we're they need to have a way to fix them. That's one. And I know they're worried that but, Sky Judge would go right. too far. Right. That's an easy one that easy Sky fix. Judge fixes. You get. You get on the horn with yep. the referee in that game, and you say, "Pick up the flag." Yeah. Pick up the flag. He didn't hit him in the head. Millions of people are watching this, and they're all seeing in the replay, he didn't hit him in the head, so we look like idiots if we don't pick up the flag. Thank you very much. Pick up the flag. I'll talk to you later. And then That's th- what and needs to happen. I know. And then people want to wonder why P.J. Williams goes low on Chris Godwin and, and you know tears his ACL. It's because of that. You know, It's because of that. The NFL has self-corrected itself so, so egregiously that you're going to start causing other injuries because guys are going to go, well, the hell with this. I'm just going to take his legs out, and if his leg breaks, then so what? I won't get a penalty. You know, again, it, it, the, actually, it, it actually makes the strike zone even smaller because you're still properly hitting him where you can, but you're hitting him in a way that causes his head to move in a way that makes it look like he got hit in the head even if he didn't. Yeah. It's preposterous. I, I, it is. It's preposterous. And it, and it goes back to our old thing there. You know, again, like, Oh, dicey decision by the quarterback. He almost got the the tight end killed. No big deal. Free 15 yards. I mean, damn, at some point they got to start penalizing these quarterbacks for this or something. Finding them, you know, you know, I, I, attempted murder by the quarterback. It's a $10,000 fine this week. It's just that that to me is what bothers me more than anything right I'd now. I'd say it's more attempted involuntary attempted manslaughter. Attempted manslaughter? Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't <laughs> okay. I don't know that there's such a thing as attempted manslaughter, but if there were, that would be it, it would be some of the throws that we see from NFL <laughs> yes. quarterbacks. Here's Jerry Hughes dragged down Mac Jones out of bounds on Sunday. The Bills defensive mm. end getting after the Patriots quarterback. Flag was thrown. Flag was picked up. Maybe if Mac Jones, you know, wore number 12 instead of number 10, the flag would not have been picked up. This is amazing that this gets at, picked up. Let's have a look at this. Uh, there's Mac Jones rolling to his right, turning on the Jets to the extent that he can. And uh, now I, I, I think I understand why they picked it up because he was trying to keep him from going down. Well, so well, but he's the reason he went he's, down. He's the reason he well, went down. He pushed him to go down. So then he went, oh, no, I've messed up. Let me try to help him up because he knew he was he was in, he knew he was late hit. I mean, yeah. He but he didn't hit him really hard. I just wonder if the Patriot robot is programmed there to collapse uh, like the uh, proverbial house of cards if he feels any contact with his body whatsoever. Well, when you it was just kind of a weird, awkward look. It almost looked like a horse collar tackle. Well, when you get in that position too, as you like, you're gonna go down because you don't want to get pushed and then not end up running into the chain guy and the Gatorade bottles and the. So that's kind of your natural thing when you get into that close side of the sidelines. Once you get pushed and you go, whoa, you kind of just start to go down. Either way, I mean, again, I, you know, I, I don't know how that's not called. I don't know how you pick that flag up. It, that's it, what it I want to say. Well, it is, it's, it, it's, it's kind of an accidental horse collar because he's trying to hold him up by pulling his jersey, and that's what causes him to jerk backward and, and assume that very dangerous posture Position, of the lower right. legs that got the Roy Williams will – put in place 20 years ago yeah to to not pull guys down from behind Belichick went insane right there he went insane too after that 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 was yeah again it's 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 not that egregious the problem is like you're saying if it's Brady or some of the other superstar quarterbacks it gets called and it's not even thought about nobody talks about it and I you know on that game I, I I can't remember I think that was Romo and Jim Nance right uh, was yes. that them on Sunday? Right. I mean, Romo even caught like. Uh, no, 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 no. They, they were in Kansas. They were in, they, Kansas. they were in Kansas City. OK, yeah. I can't remember who it was exactly. But I know the, the announcers of the game were going like, why did Jerry Jerry Hughes even touch him? That's the problem. I think it was Carl Davis. I mean, he was kind of all over it. And yeah, just weird that they would throw the flag. We're into protecting the quarterbacks and late hits. But now we're going to pick it up, even though it was a late hit. It just wasn't that hard. Uh, that that's where that one was weird. It's inconsistent. It, la- it leads to the inconsistent conversation once again. Charles Davis just texted me to say who's Carl Davis. Oh, uh, my bad. Different. My bad, Charles. Bad. My bad, that's Charles. That's all right, Phil. They do have a Carl. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm used to that. They, they do have a <laughs> Carl Davis who plays nose tackle on the Patriots. I might have been getting that in my head. Sorry, Charles is the man. My bad, Charles. Maybe, maybe Carl Davis was picking up a second paycheck that day. I don't know. <laughs> the, the Patriots were on offense Very talented. on that play. Um, uh, here, here's here's one more Baker Mayfield the final interception of the game while the Browns were driving for what would have been a very unexpected last second victory potentially yeah Rasul Douglas gets his second pick of the day 
after eh, doing something maybe you shouldn't have done to Donovan Peoples-Jones, but it's not a foul if they don't call it. Should they have called it, there was a little hold there before the ball was in the air. And if the ball's in the air, it becomes pass interference. But there's de- – oh, oh, that's uh, – yeah, That's the that's, angle. That's probably pass interference, not yes, defensive holding. 100%. The ball's in the air. Yeah, ball's yeah. in the air. He pulled them and kind of slingshots himself forward. You know, again, people are going to be like, well, Donovan's people Jones wasn't that effective. Well, Donovan Peoples Jones is a freak of nature. He was affected. It didn't mean his body had a flail everywhere and he goes crazy. He's six four and two twenty and probably can squat five hundred pounds. So his body's not going to flail. But that's certainly again it goes back to that's called every time in the first quarter, but here we are late in the fourth, we're not going to call it. You know, and, and he kind of he kinda used he kind of uses that too to kind of slingshot, slingshot his way forward. toward the ball. I yeah. know that's it's a, he, it helped him make a break on the ball. Rasul Douglas, Baker Mayfield's first and fourth interception in those football games were egregious pass interference. Egregious to me, that's egregious. His first one, Mike, if you remember, he threw the deep post. I believe that was Donovan People Jones too, and they had it. And Rasul Douglas just ran into him and blocked him and cut it off and that let Savage go back and get the interception that was another one it was it was bad they were very fortunate that way in a, in a crazy game on on Christmas Day Pete Pete has given me an option to wrap this segment I've got two choices all right we can play the Randy Gregory clip that he swore we had earlier that he now swears that we definitely have or we can fire Pete Chris, I'll consult with you before we make a final decision. Man. Should we play the clip? As, as, or should, oh, if we don't, no, no, I'm sorry. Pete's now, Pete's now clarifying. If we don't have it, we can fire him. So he's not giving us the choice yeah, to fire him. I yet. like Pete. He's okay. But let's see the I'd clip. like to fire him, let's but I like his clip. kids and his wife. So I'll, I'll, we'll keep him. Let's see the clip. Here's the play. Again, you may be familiar with this part of the play. You've seen it 20 times. Here's the back end of it where that's great. Randy Gregory rolls over and lays next to him and the referee's right there. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I'm watching you 94, but I don't think you're taunting him. I just think you're having a little fun and Hey, it's Christmas time. Well, Let's have a little fun to honor John Madden football from time to time should be fun. There's a little pat on the butt there. Randy Gregory's just having and, some fun. And yes, a hundred percent in common sense. And to me, that's, you know, uh, that's, uh, I'm, I'm, that's Vinovich, right? The, the referee, am I correct with that one? I feel like I am. I'm trying to look, I'm pretty sure it was that day. Yes. It's Vinovich. Vin- Bill Vinovich is one of the best re- referees in football period. I always enjoy every game. He has common sense. He shows it there. That's where I want from the NFL officiating. To me, he is one of the best we have in the game. I hope he's in the Super Bowl in a lot of the big playoff games. I always feel good when he's announced in the game because he seems to have a good feel, and he's just not too much of a, use your phrase, over officious jerk at, at the moments. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.